Well, you make me uh, the guy with the railroad follow Hyperloop. Um, <laughs> so um, back in 2001, I have a fleet of, for, for Sierra Railroad Company, I have a fleet of 24 locomotives. And I was trying to find a way that was better than traditional diesel to, to operate the locomotives. And we hit on the idea of biodiesel. It's a great fuel. Um, problem that we ran into is that it comes from soybeans. And one of the problems when you're using a lot of biodiesel is you're taking a lot of cropland away from food and you're making fuel. So, by the way, as a side note, when you're running a locomotive on biodiesel, it smells like french fries all day long. <laughs> but we were trying to find a more sustainable source for, the, for making biodiesel, and we hit on it. Garbage. In fact, the average American throws away 4.4 pounds of garbage every single day. Everyone in this room, over the course of their lifetime, will throw away the equivalent of 14 and a half school buses worth of garbage. The United States throws away 250 million tons of garbage every single year. The World Bank estimates that globally, we throw away 1.7 billion tons of garbage every year. That's a line of garbage trucks stretching from San Francisco all the way to New York City, full of garbage every day. What makes that worse is the estimate is that by 2025, that number is going to increase to 6 billion tons a year. Not only is that an incredible waste of resources being thrown into a hole in the ground, when you throw that trash into the ground, it can contaminate the land, it can seep into the water table, and if it gets loose in the ocean, it creates enormous gyres or dead zones in our ocean. All that sounds terrible, but the worst thing is something you can't even see. Every ton of garbage we throw away emits methane. And in fact, it creates one ton of garbage creates two tons of greenhouse gas in the form of methane. Methane is 84 times more potent a short-term greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. That's a huge problem. And in fact, landfills are the largest man-made source of methane going into our atmosphere. So what can we do about it? Well, a lot of communities have thought, well, maybe we should go with incineration. Incineration is better because you're at least doing something with it, but the problem is, is that not only are you creating toxic ash, dioxin, but you're also creating an enormous amount of carbon dioxide going up the stacks. What most people are recognizing is the right solution is going for zero waste. And how do we get there? Our belief is that you get there using gasification, specifically fast ox gasification. What is it? Gasification is essentially injecting oxygen where it then reacts with the carbon in the waste and creates an enormous heat, about 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. At that temperature, everything breaks down. We think of it as molecular recycling. What happens is you end up with liquid metal, liquid stone, and syngas. Syngas is something that you can take and turn into a variety of products. One thing you could do is you can take syngas and clean it up so it's cleaner than actual natural gas, and you can use it to run a combined cycle power plant. Um, you could run Hyperloop, for example, but you can use it to firm <laughs> You could use it to firm solar and wind, because one of the biggest problems is, is when you use these renewable sources of energy, you still have to have some sort of dirty carbon backup when they're not producing power. With gasification, you can create that renewable energy source to firm solar and wind. The other things that you can do with it is you can take one ton of garbage, turn it into syngas, and syngas is 70% carbon monoxide and 30% hydrogen. You can take those two chemicals and you run them through a catalyst and you can take that ton of garbage and create one barrel of diesel. Diesel that's 20 times cleaner than the California fuel standard. You can also take that, you can make gasoline, ethanol, or fertilizer. So there's a variety of opportunities of what you can do with it. The one that I think is most exciting is you can actually make renewable hydrogen. You can make renewable hydrogen for fuel cell electric vehicles 
for a cost of about 43 cents a gallon of gasoline equivalent for a zero emission fuel. Take that, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> so, so how do we do it? Well, the idea is that we've developed a gasifier here in Sacramento and ran our pilot for five years in cooperation with the US Army. Why does the Army care about gasification? Because every day in Afghanistan, in Iraq, and other places where we go to war, we have to haul fuel to the front and we have to bring waste back. Presidential order, we have to haul our trash back. And so in doing that, we've lost over 1,600 American servicemen in transporting back and forth to the front. So they're looking for a better solution. That's why the Army's involved. They've provided financing for us to build a first-of-its-kind commercial facility in Monterey County uh, here in California. That's under construction right now with funding from the Army and the California Energy Commission. It's being built today. But one facility isn't going to change the world. And in fact, when I meet with other clean tech executives, they tell me the same thing, is that they all went out trying to make the world a better place. But as soon as they get out of their home territory, all the rules are different. If you just go to Iowa, every permit, uh, the, the local contacts, the utilities, everything is different. And so for a small company to try to take their technology and build it someplace else is enormously difficult. Typically, being able to take some interesting environmental technology and do it somewhere else, three in 10 years is considered a really good pace. Folks, we're not going to change the world at that pace. So we tried to come up with something different. We decided to take our technology and share it with the world. The way we're going to do that is we've come up with a website called techpipe.com. And what we're doing is we're taking our technology and we're distributing it through the internet. We're making it available to local entrepreneurs on a county by county basis across the 3,100 counties in the United States and the 50,000 equivalent entities across the world so that entrepreneurs can take the technology and use it using their local knowledge of the permitting structure, local relations, their friends, their neighbors, the people that they need to bring a technology to fruition, but empower the entrepreneur in communities all over the world so they can take this technology now in thousands of places at once to try and clean up the atmosphere to stop this incredible waste of resources. What we're hoping to do, what we're hoping to do with TechPipe, which is launching this month, what we're hoping to do is find entrepreneurs in our community and in communities all over the, the state and the nation and give them the resources they need so they can make big profit, of course, but they can also do something environmentally beneficial in their community. If you're an entrepreneur or you know somebody who wants to become an environmental entrepreneur, send them to the site. We'd love to have them find a place somewhere where they can do what needs to be done for this world. Thank you all very much.